Thank you so much for coming tonight, Gillian. I'm so excited to have you here and um, I'd love to hear how you became a VC or what attracted you to that path and, and what it's like to be a female VC. I know a lot of my uh, female VC friends have told me stories, so I'm interested. True. So um, the VC path has actually been a culmination of years of expertise, I would say, in many different areas. I started in banking, I've been in publishing, I was, as you know, vice president and director of development at Warner Brothers, Universal Studios, I've been associate publisher of a magazine, I've had my own angel fund, which I've been investing in companies for about 25 years. And so this is really a cross, inter, it's sort of an intersection point that I've, I've also built four companies, I've failed miserably in one. Yes, I am that old. Uh, and so this was really my, a combination of everything that I have loved have loved to have done um, and still do, but the ability to now marry it together. And also, um, one of my personal passions is to create uh, paths of self-sufficiency for women. And 30% of structure capital are female founders as opposed to 7%, uh, which is the norm, which is shouldn't even, that's an oxymoron. Uh, and so I really want to find a way to do that in a much more productive, efficient way. Um, and also just to reach a potential in people. I always say that that's my biggest mission is to be able to, for not only women, but young, and older people, whatever, to create um, abil the ability to reach their potential. And so by investing in them, not only money, but time, emotional growth, life lessons, I felt that this was the, the definition of what I've done in the past, present, and what I'd like to be do in the future is a venture capitalist, as opposed to a vulture capitalist. And so I did a project many years ago when I first came here for a year to find out why women are invested less than men. At that point, it was less than 2% of the funding went to women. And, um, and so I'm interested that um, one of the things that came out in the research that we were looking at was that the more female VCs there are, the more women that are funded. And not because of favouritism, but because women understand other women's businesses. Um, whereas a lot of male VCs have to go home to their wives and say, do you think this would work? Um, so have you found that that is the case, that you've been able to support the women, female founders in a, in a more um, practical way than yeah. possibly some of the males? Yes, so this is, that's a, this is very interesting. Well, first of all, I don't invest into women because they're women. No. The same reason I don't vote for a woman because they're a woman. Yeah. So that I set in one category, all right? Because there are women and I'm sure, and that's fantastic. But I, th I see women, they're, I think that they're much more productive horizontally. Okay, as men are productive vertically. And so women are multitaskers. And if you've read the book called The Female Brain, written by yes. Dr. Leanne Brizendine, yeah. right? Women listen differently, they process, uh, uh, they process information differently. And so subsequently, to be able to assess a product and build it um, is really complementary to men. So I think that we need a joint effort here. I don't think that it's just females investing to females and men investing in men. I think where we will have the most impact actually is that I can bring through my lens those capabilities and assessment skills as do men. I find it very sad that men don't really, can't look through that lens um, and share that lens with us so that they see the value of these products, not how they re it relate to them, but how it will relate to the population, to the, to the general consumer. So I feel that they do themselves a disservice in a lot of ways. 
by having a, 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 a female VC, a partner, a principal uh, in their fund, I find it makes them a much stronger fund. So um, my two partners, uh, Mike Walsh and Jacob Shea, I mean, these, we complement each other in every which way. And so on the funding side, it, it makes much more sense. Um, in terms of the female founders themselves, uh, they have different capabilities. And we have seen that many portfolios, the, the key revenues are actually created by the women, uh, female founders or co-founders. And so I just feel that there has to be more data supporting this. Um, I do feel that uh, my female founders are even more hungry in some ways. Uh, because as we know, women are constantly trying to prove themselves over and over again. A woman goes into a room and pitches an idea to an all-male cast, so to speak, right? And right away, she's perceived as having to prove herself and then the product. A man goes to pitch, and he is just automatically considered capable, and and then he has to prove his product. And so because of that, women have a bit more tenacity. But I always tell women to stay tenacious but gracious. Never to lose their fe female wit or wisdom and edge. Um, because you are a female, and with that comes some tremendous attributes. Yes. Uh, and I think there are a lot of men who would like to have some of the wit and wisdom that women have. They just won't admit it. <laughs> I agree. That's fantastic. And um, do you have a, an interesting or funny story or a couple of stories you were telling me earlier about being an investor and being on that side of the table? Yes. Well, one of my pet peeves for founders is that they never come with enough energy. So I always say that's something, that's a filter I look for. It's not just courage and diligence and resilience it, and confidence. It's actually high energy. I want to see that they're going to be able to motivate their team and be able to pitch their product to investors and partners. So I really do look for high energy. So there was this one investor, there's this one founder, he was quite, quite brilliant, and I knew that on paper, um, and it was in the health tech space. And he came to the meeting, and he started out like slunched in his chair, sort of like this, and he was pitching sort of like this. And I thought, you know, sit up in your chair, you know, pitch me your product. And, and as he was, as he was pitching, his eyes suddenly started to close and he oh my God. fell asleep. Oh and I thought, God. oh, well, this is the epitome of low energy. <laughs> and I said, hello, hello, are you there? And he sort of propped up and he said, oh, he said, did I nod off? And I said, oh. yes, you <laughs> nodded off. And I said, perhaps this wasn't the best day to pitch. To which his response was, no, 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 I'm perfectly fine. Sometimes this happens. And I said, oh, do you have a medical condition? He said, no, no, no. He said, I'm just really laid back. Oh, my God. And I thought, well, <laughs> that's not going to work. <laughs> I don't care how good your product is. If you cannot pitch it, you're not going to be able to sell it, and goodbye. Really? So that was that. Yeah. yeah. So, and there was one other one that was a great one, and I love animals, so in a way I didn't hop out of my chair, but this brilliant scientist was pitching, and he, out of his pocket, a wee little head came out, a little tiny rodent head, and it just po poked out, and I, and I looked at it, and he looked at it, and he said, oh, Houdini, not now. And he pushed the little rodent back in his pocket. And I'm sitting there thinking, huh. Uh, and I said, and, I, and out came the little, it turned out not to be a mouse. It actually was a rat. Oh and so Houdini popped right out of his pocket again. And I'm thinking, OK, there has to be something to say. Now, rats are extremely, extremely bright animals. And so I said, well, uh, I can't recall his name. I want to say William uh, or Willie. And I said, 
why don't you just take Houdini out of your pocket? I'm, if he's a good listener, you know, feel free to have him sit on your lap. I'm good with that. To which he proceeded to take the little rat out of his pocket, sitting on his lap, and the whole time the little thing was, you know, kind of looking around, and it was a bit distracting. And I said to him, Leslie, he said, I said, is it, you know, is this part of your pitch? Because one would think if you bring a rat into the pitch. And he said, no, he's just company. He said, he's kind of like a co-founder. <laughs> Aha! Uh -huh. What? I, I, but I didn't even go there. Yeah. But interestingly enough, he he was high energy. He was quite bright. He brilliantly pitched the company, regardless of the rat sitting on his lap. You know, I actually thought that was memorable. And I always say to someone, leave me something memorable. Yes. And I and like and this was years ago. Amazing. That was, you know, the man with the rat. I ended up not funding him, okay. but um, there were other reasons. It has nothing to do with Houdini. Okay. Well, that's just amazing. Thank you so much for those stories. And uh, fantastic to have you here tonight, and I'm really looking forward to the chat. It was my pleasure. I love being here. This is where we all should be, right, at the start line. Um, and thank you so much. I appreciate it.